Self-fulfilling prophecies refer to times when our expectations of a person changes the way we interact with them, which then changes their behaviour in line with our expectations. In 1966, Rosenthal and Jacobson were interested in examining the effects of teacher expectancy on how students performed in the classroom. Rosenthal and Jacobson administered an IQ test to students from the first grade to the sixth grade, but called the test the Harvard Test of Inflected Acquisition. They then gave the teachers the results and indicated that 20% of their students were super smart. They told the teachers that these super smart students would show an incredible amount of intellectual development in the next year. Rosenthal and Jacobson called these children the bloomers. They gave each of the teachers the names of these students. However, what the teachers didn't know was that the students who identified as bloomers were actually selected at random. After the initial IQ test, the scores from the bloomers did not differ from those of the other students in the class. Rosenthal and Jacobson retested the same students eight months later with the same IQ test. The students who were labelled as bloomers scored approximately four IQ points higher than the rest of the students in the class. Those students, despite being randomly selected, were suddenly the smarter students. So expectations had become reality. Rosenthal and Jacobson then tested the same students again one year after the initial retest of their IQ and found that the students who were randomly allocated as bloomers gained more IQ points than the other students. A number of studies have since replicated this effect. However, it's not very clear as to why this effect occurs. It's possible that teachers may be more willing to smile at students who they think are smarter than the other students. They might make more eye contact and nod their heads toward them. As a result, they may positively reinforce the student's learning. Maybe the teachers tested these students differently. Maybe they challenged them differently. Maybe they treated them with different levels of respect. The students who they thought had potential ended up developing their full potential, while the students who they didn't think had potential didn't. This research is important because it showed that the teachers' assumptions about students' intellectual potential influenced them to create their own reality. Imagine how devastating it would have been a couple of hundred years ago for little girls when they were told that they were not really capable of higher level thinking or to become mathematicians or scientists. Even today, we sometimes hear teachers say things like, boys are not so good at school. They're not really cut out for school. School is not really their thing. These kinds of counter stereotypes probably do not help the students to do well at school. Even though we haven't been talking negatively about stereotypes, this kind of stereotyping can be sinister, as it constrains and shapes people's behaviour.